Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us again on this beautiful Shabbat. Today is the 13th of May, the year 2023, or the year 5783. And today's parasha is called Behar Bechukotai, which is two uh, portions in one. So Behar means on the mount, and Bechukotai means in my statutes. And the portion comes from the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 1, through chapter 27, verse 34. The Haftarah, or the prophetic portion, comes from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 11, Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 19 through 17, uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 19 through chapter 17, verse 14, otherwise that would be a little weird, <laughs> and chapter 32, verses 6 through 27. And Brit Harasha, or the New Covenant, comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 20 through 28, and Matthew 21, verses 33 to 46. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21, and chapter 13, verses 1 through chapter 15, verse 32, all in Luke. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21, and chapter 15, verses 10 through 12. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 21 through 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. And 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. So it's quite a bit of reading cut out for you. My name is Rabbi Clint Harald Fry. I want to thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> Before I start, I want to just open this time with prayer. Abba Father, I want to thank you, first of all, for the privilege and opportunity again it is to be in your presence and to just study your word and learn more about you i ask you simply teach us your ways me above all and that everything that comes out of my mouth will be for your glory from your ruach hakodesh your holy spirit in the name of yeshua amen so as always we're going to have two uh short topics and we'll talk about first one we're going to talk about the year of freedom so <clears throat> people in general experience redemption on individual levels if we think about it but when the messiah comes all of israel will be saved said so in the bible so the year of jubilee is the year of freedom and that's where we're at now the year of jubilee uh this is the 50th year set of seven years is 49 years and the 50th year is the year of jubilee Next, this coming Rosh Hashanah will start a new set of seven years. So according to the Torah, a Hebrew slave could only be enslaved for six years. In Exodus 21, 2, where it says, If you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve for six years. But on the seventh, he shall go out as a free man without payment. Even if the Hebrew slave had not served the full six years, when the Jubilee arrived, his term of service ended and he went free. So... That would be the Sabbath year, obviously. The sixth year and then the seventh year is the Sabbath year. Jubilee is the 50th year also. So this shows us the difference between the personal salvation of the individual and the national salvation of Israel. So throughout the course of time, individuals experience redemption on individual levels. But when the Messiah comes, like I said in Romans eleven twenty six, 26, all of Israel will be saved. So the Torah uses a particular term for national salvation. The Hebrew word is deror, which seems to mean free, flowing, or running. The Bible uses it to describe the freedom and release that comes in the year of Jubilee. In the Jubilee, you shall thus consecrate the 50th year and proclaim a release, or deror, throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a Jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. Leviticus 25.10 so in the days of the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet rebuked Israel for failing to keep of law or releasing the Hebrew slave in the seventh year. King Zedekiah made a covenant with the people of Jerusalem to proclaim release or deror for all of the Hebrew slaves. When the people reneged on the obligation to release their slaves out, Jeremiah declared the following. <clears throat> Therefore, thus says the Lord Adonai, 
He has not obeyed me in proclaiming release or devour. Each man to his brother and each man to his neighbor. Behold, I am proclaiming a release or devour to you, declares Adonai, to the sword and to the pestilence and to the famine, and I will make you a terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. This is found in Jeremiah 34, 17. So the same Hebrew word appears in Isaiah 61 in reference to the mission of the Messiah, Yeshua. It says, The Spirit of Adonai is upon me, because Adonai has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty or deror to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, Isaiah 61, 1-2. So Yeshua read this passage from Isaiah in the Nazareth synagogue and applied it to himself, saying, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing in Luke 4.21. He identified himself as the one anointed with the spirit of Adonai and his mission of proclaiming the year of Adonai's favor. This does not imply that the particular year Yeshua read the passage in the Nazareth synagogue was a year of jubilee. <laughs> Instead, Yeshua alluded to the prophetic significance of the Jubilee, namely the, the final redemption and the draw, uh, the dawning of the Messianic era. Yeshua offered his generation the freedom of the final redemption and the kingdom of heaven if they would repent. Notice the big if. The generation, as we know, did not repent, and we still wait for the final redemption. Yes, there were some believers, but the generation themselves did not repent. Nevertheless, Yeshua's death and resurrection accomplished the redemption of our souls, which is the most important thing. If a person will repent and turn to Adonai for the forgiveness of sins in Yeshua's name, he can enter into the spiritual jubilee today. <clears throat> the Redeemer... He's already paid the price for the ransom. He extends his hand. He's giving out his hand to lift us out of the muddy pit. The doors of redemption stand open right now, people. And time is running out. The second thing I would like to talk about is calculating the end. So 100% of all the people who have ever predicted the time for the coming of the Messiah have been wrong 100% of the time. You'll notice me saying often, in the next few years, Yeshua will return. Notice I don't say exactly when, but we can give pretty much an understanding to the time when we know that the year of Jubilee is ending at Rosh Hashanah this year in September, and the new set of seven years is starting. We're seeing things happening worldwide. Governments are, are restricting more and more. They're taking freedoms away. They're going to start taking property away, insisting that we get a microchip. It's all happening right before our eyes. But I will not say a date. <laughs> that is not okay. So in the Torah, the year of Jubilee is the set time for redemption. Therefore, I can give you compared to the coming of the Messiah. Now, notice I've said that this year is a year of Jubilee in the Hebrew calendar. And that the year is 5783. However, they have lost track of the actual years in the Hebrew calendar. We are actually much closer to the year 6,000 than we realize. So we need to keep that in mind. It can be compared, like I said, to the coming of the Messiah. So unlike the Jubilee, however, we cannot count down the years until Messiah. We can count down the time. We can possibly get a close idea of when, maybe even the year. We don't know exactly. It could be wrong. But it is very close. No one knows the day and hour. Okay? But we can know the year. We can even maybe guess pretty close to the year it's going to happen. Okay? We might not even know the day or the hour, but we can know the time. Every man or person who has ever calculated his rival, like I said, has been proven wrong. They've always tried to prove specific dates and sometimes even an hour in which he would come back. Never happened. So, it might seem tempting to try to determine the time of Yeshua's arrival. Like I said, we can have an understanding of what's coming up in the next seven years. And it's going to get really sketchy. So, 
So calculators and times often point to the Jubilee cycle to draw inferences regarding the time of redemption. I also believe that <clears throat> this year of Jubilee ending will initial, initiate the seven years. Like I said, I could be wrong. So, but that's just what I understand of what's going on and what I've asked to be shown by the Holy Spirit. We'll see. Only the Father knows. Daniel's prophecy of 70 weeks has also been used by both Jewish and Christian eschatologists to calculate the time of the Messiah's return. <laughs> so throughout history, sages and Bible scholars have been searching the scriptures for clues and, you know, even writing math calculations to calculate years and dates regarding the coming of Messiah. The conclusion of these end-time calculators are almost always the same. Messiah will definitely be arriving within the next 5 to 30 years, that is to say, within the lifetime of the person making the calculation. For more than 2,000 years, Messiah has been due to arrive within the next few years. He's always coming but never arriving. We can know that he's arriving soon, though. Like I said, things are vamping up. Things are kicking in. The Antichrist system is kicking in. The beast system is kicking in. We are going to see things happening soon. Even the world governments are talking about a great world reset here in the year 2023. We'll see what happens. So, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani said that in the time of Rabbi Yonatan, <clears throat> may the bones of these individuals who calculate the end be blasted away. It's a bit severe, but people will say, since the fixed time for his coming has arrived, yet he has not come, he will never come. That's the problem. Even the Pope himself has said that Jesus is not coming back. Yeshua is not coming back. That's a bold statement. But we must wait for him, as it is written in the book of Habakkuk 2.3. Though he tarries, wait for him, for he will certainly come. He will not delay. Those who set actual dates are robbing people of the joy of anticipating the Messiah's arrival. I can say, I believe it'll come back at a certain year. That's my belief. And I tell people, be ready. Be ready for what's coming. But setting specific dates, even sometimes hours, these people disappoint their adherents, the, the people who are following them again and again, causing people to fall away or even die. Like those who preach the pre-tribulation rapture, those who are doing this are, first of all, it's unbiblical. It's not even written anywhere. It talks about the last trumpet, the last shofar of a great catching up. It doesn't talk anything about any trumpets before that, and especially before the seven years start. This will cause a great falling away. Very dangerous and evil. So when we set our hopes on a certain date, the date goes by without Yeshua coming back or a rapture, we find it harder and harder to believe that he's coming at all. So when you see a person prophesying about Messiah, you should know that he is either engaged in witchcraft or has dealings with demons maybe. Who knows? I wouldn't say always, but they're definitely playing with fire when they're talking about a specific date. You know, these persons creating calculations and secrets and no man, not even Yeshua himself, knows the day he will come back. Like I said, we can have an understanding of where time we're at. It does talk about seven years, the final seven years before Yeshua does come back. So, calculating by the Hebrew calendar, and by, like I said, by what's going on in the world with the world governments and their one world government coming up and the money system, all that microchip. Like I said, we can catch a glimpse of what is coming, what's about to start. I might be wrong. In the year 2023, after Rosh Hashanah, is the beginning of the seven years on the Hebrew calendar. At least the Hebrew calendar as is understood now. 
And who knows, might be off by a year. Because like I said, they've lost track. It does say that the world will be 6,000 years old when Yeshua starts to reign for the thousand years. Why? Because there's 6,000 years and then the 7,000th year will be a time of rest for the world where he reigns. That's how God works. That's how Hashem works. Okay, six and then seven, just like the six years of planting, seven of rest. Same thing. So the world will be 6,000 years old, but when he comes back. So, maybe the witchcraft allegation is a little strong, but given the de devastating effects that setting dates can have on people, their lives and their faiths, one might rightly conclude that maybe demons are well pleased with the work of those who do set actual dates of the Messiah's coming, or the rapture. The medieval Torah giant, Maimon, the Maimonids, he wrote, one must not fix a time for Messiah's coming, nor interpret biblical passages as to derive from them the time of his coming. Yet, even giving this stern warning, Maimonides himself could not resist the temptation, and in the letter to the Yemenite Jews, he calculated the date, the date of Messiah's coming to, just, to be just a few years off in the year 1210. AC or CE. So I think that was just a little bit off. Like I said, the, the, the earth itself needs to be 6,000 years old. From understanding the biblical concept of God's timing before Yeshua comes back. So I hope you've had an interesting time of learning. Like I have, always let's keep our eyes open. Let's keep our eyes on open, focused on Yeshua, but at the same time keeping them open to what is happening around us. Because many people are sleeping and pretending like nothing's going on or things will get better or whatever. It's only going to get worse, people. So may you be blessed and Shabbat Shalom. Uh, just so to remind you, there are links below to contact us. There's a link for Mahathir Zayshev Tikva, which is Rebbe Tzin Gabriela's website in English and Italian for those who need biblical beliefs counseling. There is the uh, link for all of our uh, free resources. And then we have a link for those who would like to help support our ministry in bringing the message of salvation in Yeshua to our uh, fellow Jews who have not yet received him. Thank you again. Shabbat Shalom to all of you.